This program is brought to you by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. This is NDDC Today. Good evening. It's that time of the year when we say a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now, has the outgoing year been happy at the NDDC? We really can't say you will be the judge. A year that saw so many changes and so many action in the NDDC, with new buildings and roads springing up here and there. How exactly was it? In this episode, we take a look back at what has happened and what the NDDC has positioned itself to happen in the new year. Welcome to Looking Back at 2021 at the NDDC. Twenty twenty one, a year of rapid change in the NDDC. Between October twenty nineteen up till December twenty twenty, the Commission witnessed two interim management committees IMC piloting its affairs. They were also saddled with the supervision of the forensic audit ordered by President Muhammad Buhari in twenty nineteen. However, just as the year 2020 was winding down, precisely on December 20th, the federal government announced the dissolution of the second IMC and appointed in its place an interim administrator in the person of Mr. Effio Aqua to pilot the affairs of the commission and to oversee the much vaunted forensic audit. And so, year 2021, began with a new administration at the helm of the affairs of the NDDC. The mandate remained the same, to see to the rapid development and transformation of the Niger Delta region. The aqua-led NDDC was in tough terrain. Many waters had gone under the bridge. To succeed in its task ahead, it was imperative for the new NDDC administration to restore the relationship between it and the National Assembly, which had gone quite frosty in the previous administration. First task was to get the Commission's budget appropriated, and second, to heal the relationship as earlier mentioned. There was also the need for the administration to rebuild the confidence among the stakeholders in the region. These issues were outlined clearly during the first media interaction by the interim administrator. What we have done now is to hit the ground running. And so first, I met with the, the directors yesterday because they are very, very important in the development. I have told them we, we have to sit there, right there on the spot, we look at the vision of redeeming the image of the Niger Delta. Image before who? Image before the stakeholders, image before the legislators, image before the, the indigents of the South-South and Nigeria at large. And so the interim administrator and his management team began a regional-wide consultation drive to major stakeholders across the Niger Delta and the state governors of the region. The River State Government was the first port of call of the interim administrator and his team. The meeting with the state governor, Chief Nesom Mwike, was to solicit the support of the governor and the state so that the NDDC could tackle the many problems it was facing. In the meeting, Governor Wike called for an NDDC that will effectively support the states of the Niger Delta. Let me say very clearly that the, the essence, the intent of the founding fathers of the NDDC was to see how that commission will be a body that will support the states of the Niger Delta and the development of the region. The Delta State Governor, Senator Dr. Ifanyo Kowa on his part, called for an active advisory committee for the NDDC 
and the review of the Niger Delta Development Master Plan. This actually becomes very important so that in the shared idea, you don't have duplication of projects. And then there's a common level of planning that can actually help to truly develop the Niger Delta area the more. From Delta State, the NDDC delegation moved to Imo State, where the Governor, Senator Hope Uzadima, advised that the NDDC should be given a free hand to operate in order to actualize its true mandate. I would therefore want to advise our leaders, our leaders and members of all oil producing states to shun politics, shun sentiments and allow NDDC to perform. Aqua Ibom and on those state government respectively also played host to the interim administrator and his team. The aim was the same, to seek collaboration so that the commission can move forward. For this opportunity, we just believe that um, we are ready to collaborate with you, we are ready to partner with you because you are ready to agree with us. I appreciate you, I will not forget this visit. The NDDC team, led by the interim administrator, also visited some prominent stakeholders in the region, like elder statesmen by E.K. Clark, traditional rulers and women leaders across the region. And of course, the NDDC had the backing of the Minister of the Niger Delta at every turn of his consultative drive. He himself accompanied the NDDC team to some of these important visits to give the necessary support and strength. I bring the message of felicitation for the presidency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Obrari, and his cabinet. Uh, he has he allowed me to share this and to assure the Royal Majesty that uh, not just River State, but the Niger Delta region remains a priority in his government and is very prepared to do anything to assist the region to move forward. These initiatives eventually led to the revival of trust and cooperation between the NDDC and the two committees of the National Assembly that oversees the NDDC. This was resolved with a visit of the two committees to the headquarters of the Commission for the first time in over a year. We came down to apologize for whatever has happened and he told us he's ready to work for the people of the Niger Delta. Within the tenor, he's going to be here. And that is why you see my distinguished colleagues. We have to go to the Senate leadership to say, this man has come, he has apologized, he has accepted that there is need for cooperation and there is need for Niger Delta to move forward. We are here to engage with you. With those words of assurances from the National Assembly principal officers, the coast was now clear for the NDDC administration to run with the vision of achieving the Commission's mandate and continue to operate. At this time, the beam was focused on the eternal structure of the Commission. In 2021, the administration introduced changes into the Commission's internal structures, financial and procurement protocols in accordance with the procurement laws and financial regulations. In the past uh, couple of days, a uh, couple of years, we have had challenges, you know, um, audits and all of that, which, uh, you know, led to recommendations. Part of what was recommended is to build capacity for public procurement processes. That's what we're doing. Top-level management staff were also deployed during this period while a few directories and departments were unbundled for more efficient service delivery and better staff output. A three-day strategic capacity building workshop retreat for directors of the commission was held in Aquaibom State. The event attracted major stakeholders in the region and had in attendance Senator Godwell Apabio. Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, as well as members of the National Assembly. This retreat spoke a lot of the impetus 
that was to be seen in the operations of the Commission throughout the period under review. The workshop also featured a one-day retreat involving traditional rulers under the ages of the traditional rulers of oil mineral producing communities of Nigeria Tromcon. Civil society organizations and youth leaders were also there who bear their minds on the budgetary processes in their developing the region. NDC future budget to focus on youth employment, not being empowered, so as to create a better future for our achieving direct use in the area. Also as part of its reorganization, the administration looked at a new way to ensure the completion and commissioning of its project across the region. Towards this end, two committees were inaugurated to help this strategy. The Projects Monitoring and Commissioning and the Reforms Committees. The Project Commissioning Committee was saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the completion of the Commission's projects scattered all over the Niger Delta while the Reforms Committee was charged to look on the Commission's internal processes and advise on how best to improve on the administration of the NDDC. But by what the interim administrator has done today, we are going to showcase these projects to the world. We are going to showcase these projects to Nigerians to see what the Commission has been doing over the years. Despite an enormous assignment that we believe because of our experience that we will be able to do all that the wants us to achieve. The Project Commissioning Committee worked round the clock to achieve its mandate and was quick to come up with tangible results from its assignment. Several projects of the Commission were inspected in the region and announced ready for commissioning. This project is now completed. We have gone to do the pre-commissioning inspection. We are going back to the office to report to the interim administrator and chief executive officer so that the project can be officially commissioned and handed over to the Aploma community and the state in general. A product of the new approach of the NDDC, this multi-billion naira magnificent building sitting on a land space of about 38,000 square meters in the heart of Fort Alcott River State is the new corporate headquarters of the NDDC, a project that took 27 years to actualize and the pride of every Niger Dalton. The completion of this architectural masterpiece may still have been a mirage today, but for the charge of President Muhammad Buhari and the final push of Senator Godswell Akpabio, Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, to ensure a speedy completion. Since its establishment, the NDDC headquarters had operated from its rented building, the Dakba Birye House, owned by the River State Government. But that situation changed on March 11, 2021. This 13-story edifice with a four-story ancillary building was commissioned by President Muhammad Buhari with pump and much pageantry. The building accommodates the executive management as well as all the directorates, departments and units of the NDDC in one place since the establishment of the Commission. Speaking at the virtual commissioning of the headquarters complex, President Buhari observed that the new headquarters building was initiated by the defunct Oil Minerals Producing Areas Development Commission on PADEC in 1996. We are handing over to the people of Niger Delta a befitting head office complex for present and future use. In his speech, the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Godswell Akpabio, thanked the interim administrator of the NDDC and other former managing directors of the Commission for their efforts to see to the completion of the complex. Also expressing their joy at the occasion of the commissioning, were notable personalities across the region, as well as members of the host community of the headquarters. Our grandfather, the President, Muhammad Ubari, thank you for giving Niger Delta people this property. 
This is a very heavy property. The fact for us in the Niger Delta has always been delivery. What is right for us, what is just for us. That it has taken so long, yes, it's painful. But now today we're here, thank God. I thought we could have it completed in three years. But we never did. And luckily, thank God, it is now complete. It's complete, yes. Thank God. I'm so delighted. When I say I'm so delighted, both official and as a personal satisfaction over the completion of this beautiful edifice, you may not understand where I'm coming from. I'm so excited, so happy. Now let's tell you about some of the complex features of this ultra-modern complex. The headquarters complex is built on a landmass measuring about 38,000 square meters, which gives ample space for the magnificent 13-floor high-rise edifice and other ancillary buildings with facilities for banking, restaurant, supermarket, community halls, staff clinic, among others. The complex has two main gates, power plants, engine house, separate car parks for staff and visitors, walkways and lots more. The interior and exterior aesthetics of the complex is a sight to behold. The headquarters edifice can be defined as a master craft of modern architecture, fully and well equipped with every modern safety and security apparatus, power supply and central air conditioning systems meant to provide that cool atmosphere for workers and visitors alike to carry out their daily businesses with less stress. A few weeks after the commissioning ceremony, the interim administrator formally handed over the keys to the Dakba Birie House to the River State Government, thus bringing to an end an NDDC as a tenant in River State. Tuesday, September 28th. Another bold testimony of the new thinking at the NDTC in project execution and delivery. The commissioning of the Special Protection Unit, SPU, Police Barracks in Omagua, Ikwere Local Government Area of Port Harcourt, is taking place. This once abandoned police barracks project of the NDTC had suffered budget delays for about 12 years and was revived and completed in the air under review by the current NDTC administration. The SPU Police Barracks Omagua consists of 164 flats, an administrative block and other ancillary buildings. Administrator visited this place precisely March 27th of this year and then he gave the matching order that this project must be commissioned in this time. On this day, the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo commissioned the SPU Base 6 Barracks at Umuagwa in the Kwere local government area of River State on behalf of President Muhammadu Buhari, in whose honor the barracks was named. An important feature of the reform is accommodation for men and officers. And I have directed that the building of barracks for men and women of the police force should be done in collaboration with the social housing effort of the Family Homes Fund. This will ensure speedy execution of all of the projects and all of the barracks that need to be provided. The story of the completion of these barracks attracted endless appreciation of the NDDC administration from different stakeholders that were present at the commissioning ceremony. I wish immensely and especially Thank the Honorable Minister of Niger Delta Affairs and the management of NDDC for conceptualizing and providing the requisite fund for the successful execution of this magnificent project. And on behalf of the good people of Niger Delta, I want to congratulate the management of this NDDC. Look at here, look at that, the interim administrator. Even if he needs staff office today, he would touch his mind and say, look, I'm happy when I was in charge here, yeah, see what I have done. It makes me happy 
because this is one of the things that we are expecting our government to be doing and it has contributed in no small measure to the development of Niger Delta and Nigeria as a whole. Apart from building, several communities in the region also had their road project completed and commissioned by the NDDC in the period under review. Take for instance in Kerbodo, in Burutu local government area of Delta State, where this 3.2 kilometers rigid pavement Chief Ambaka de Ramo Road, Kerbodo, was commissioned to the delight of the beneficiaries of the project who welcomed the interim administrator and his team with delight to their community. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This 1,000 bed space NDDC prototype hostel at the University of Uyo, Akwa, Ibom State is also set for commissioning. The present administration of the NDDC has assured that the project will be completed and delivered to the university to help alleviate the accommodation challenges faced by students in tertiary institutions. The good thing about this, this structure is that the hostel project is that it's going to bring out all our students from the, from the town, from the city centre to concentrate in one academic environment in pursuit of their, uh, of their uh, vision, which is our academic excellence. Now, there are other projects on the review in this period. Take, for example, this 132-33 kV electricity substation in Ibokoda, South Territorial District of Ondo State, which is nearing completion anytime soon. When completed, the project will give electricity to over 2,000 communities in five local government areas of the state. All we want to now do is to appreciate NDDC under your watch. This is a new era under a film. I'm very, very happy because uh, it's a long time to we'll be uh, uh, looking forward for this type of uh, project to be carried out in this community. So I thank uh, the NDDC for doing this for, for us in the community. Talking about education projects and programs, the NDDC within the period under review made donations and distribution of essential science equipment to 46 secondary schools in the region to help facilitate the effective teaching of science subjects and foster the interest of young minds in the study of the sciences in the region. The donation of the science equipment followed the earlier distribution of various vaccines, cold chains, drugs and related medical equipment to states across the Niger Delta. Training of several youths in the Niger Delta in ICT programs was also given top priority by the NDDC administration. And as much as this program is consigned today, I have acquired some level of knowledge in ICT. When NDDC gave me the opportunity of training these students, I deem me fit to take a step for it. And the course we gave them was a professional course. They don't even need to say they are going to work for somebody. They can stay in their house and become a millionaire tomorrow. The nation of waste trucks to state governments in the region to facilitate a clean environment. On behalf of uh, the people and government of the state, thank you from the bottom of our heart for bringing this uh, very encouraging support to us. The administration has also boosted the partnership between the NDDC and various educational institutions, NGOs, professional bodies and security agencies. Such partnerships include Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria ICAN, Nigeria Institute of Management, Industrial Training Fund ITF, Nigerian Navy Hydrographic School, universities in the region and so on. There is no doubt that something new has happened at the NDDC. For one, the noise of squabbles has stopped. Some of the agency's major projects have seen the light of day. Everyone can see that the new focus of an administration that has learned from the mistakes of its predecessors. With the current determination of the president and the supervising minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ababio, the NDDC can be restored back on track 
ensuring that the mandate of the Commission of developing the Niger Delta is realized. There is no doubt that the light of the NDDC still glimmers amidst its many trials. So in spite of the many daunting challenges it has faced within the past one year in carrying out its task, the interim administrator and the management of the NDDC have been able to record much progress, depending on how you look at it, in some deliverables like projects, strategic management policies, direction, and programs. Now, in the next episode, we'll continue with a look back at the NDDC for the year 2021. From all of us here in the studio, thank you for joining us and being with us this year. And we say a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year ahead. Bye-bye.